When I was in college, I had this problem. While most people would be scrolling through Instagram and TikTok, I was scrolling through Yelp. Yelp. I could never decide where to eat. And then I had an idea. I was going to build an iPhone app to pick a random restaurant for me. The problem was, I didn't know any iOS dev. I mean, my CS classes never taught this stuff. We were too busy learning about pointers in C++. So I thought, fine, I'll learn it myself. I took a summer to do a Udemy course on iOS dev, not just because I had no internships, but after working throughout the summer on this idea, I turned this idea into a reality and I deployed it on the App Store, $99 a year. And that's when I learned how to code personal projects. Now I'll share my secret with you. Let's just start with a super simple app idea. Let's build tic-tac-toe using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you've never built tic-tac-toe before and you start building it yourself, you might think, how do I even start? I don't even know what to do. And this will probably lead you to Google or YouTube where you search how to build tic-tac-toe using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You watch this tutorial and you start building alongside, and this feels like you're learning, but when you're done and you try to build another project from scratch, you realize you have no idea how to do it. This is a common issue people run into called tutorial help. This is also something that I ran into and I wasted a bunch of time. You might have heard of the saying, give a man to fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. In our example of learning tic-tac-toe, following along the tutorial and copying all of the code doesn't cause your brain to actually think through the problems. So you're basically given a fish. Like you never really learned how to fish. To learn how to fish, you need to be able to learn and build tic-tac-toe on your own. So you might ask, how do I actually learn then? This is what I did. I would follow alongside the tic-tac-toe tutorial one time. This is so you're exposed to the information and you have a reference to the final code. At this point, it's totally fine if you don't understand everything that's going on. Now you should try to build a different version of the project from scratch. Let's say this time it's a six by six tic-tac-toe game with more than two players or different rules. When you run into any problem, you can watch through that part of the video for reference to see how they built it. Or you can look through the code of the finished product of the code that you've already written. Since this project is similar but has a few differences, it forces you to not just copy the code over and really think about why things are working a certain way. Because in order to make any modifications, you need to understand why the code works as it is. You can also use ChatGPT to help you kind of like a teacher, but a lot of people use ChatGPT the wrong way. If you ask ChatGPT a question like, how do I build the columns and rows for tic-tac-toe in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? It'll spit out a bunch of code and you just copy and paste it over to your code without truly understanding. That's the same thing as giving a man a fish. You're not truly understanding why things are working if you're just copy and pasting it over. Instead of copy and pasting, you can ask ChatGPT to explain that code to you like you're five years old. When you understand it, you can write that code over yourself instead of copy and pasting. So even though those are the different ways to help you get unstuck, there'll be times where you run into an issue where you don't really know what to do. When you learn something new, you'll struggle a lot for the first couple of times, but as you keep doing it, it gets a lot easier. For example, if you've learned all the basics of JavaScript, like loops, arrays, and variables, you might've struggled the first couple of times when you've tried to learn it, I know I struggled a lot because it was like a foreign language, but after you use it a few times and you learn how to use it, it kind of becomes second nature. Like you don't really think about it anymore. And this is because learning compounds just like money. You don't have to relearn things that you've already learned. So if you try to learn a new project like tic-tac-toe, you'll keep running into issues where you don't really know what to do. So you'll learn it for the first time and the next time you do it, it'll be a lot easier. And I know there'll be times where you feel like it's really difficult and you want to give up, but just be kind to yourself and give yourself the time to learn and improve. We feel a lot of stress from the expectations that we set on ourselves, but if we had unlimited time to learn, then we wouldn't be stressed at all. So just give it time. So now that we've struggled a lot and we finally built our project, what's next? There are two different things that you can do after building this project. You can build new features in your tic-tac-toe project because when you work as a software engineer, you're most likely working in an existing code base. Once you've built a good enough foundation, you can create even more features for this project, like creating better UI, a counter for wins and losses, or a timer for each person's turn. The second thing you can do is build a similar project like Sudoku. Sudoku is a much more difficult game than tic-tac-toe, but I think a lot of the foundational knowledge does apply. 
Gemini. You can start with a smaller version of Sudoku and work your way to a larger version. When you first start building projects, it's important to start with easier ones first and then gradually work your way to more difficult ones. This is the same thing with like working out and lifting weights. If you try to lift a weight that you can't lift, you might feel discouraged. So you need to work your way up from these smaller weights and gradually over time, you'll be able to lift the larger weight. To recap on what we've learned in this video, how you learn is by trying to build things yourself. And when you run into any issues, you try to find the solution and understand it. As you build more and more projects, because learning compounds, you might not need tutorials anymore and you can just use documentation instead. For me, I almost never use tutorials anymore unless it's to set up something. Also because at work, you're most likely going to read documentation instead of watching YouTube videos on how to learn things. So this is how I learned to code by building projects. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.